Now, I've been very passionate about this issue for a long time as well. And it just it never seemed sensible, logical years and years ago when, I mean, the debate 20 some odd years ago was about automatic weapons and should they be legal, should they not be legal. And, and I just assumed that's an issue that's easy because I'm not really going to offend anybody that knows my brand or knows what we do because it is just, it's illogical that a product made for the battlefield to essentially shoot as many bullets, kill as many people in as short a period of time as possible is, has a place in civilized society. So, but I also didn't think it was appropriate to publicly advocate on behalf of an issue like that as obvious as, as it was and as appropriate as it seemed. But we ran an ad in 1991, which is we neither condone the right to bear arms or bare feet. And, but it was very careful not to take an obvious position, but this, the position nonetheless was there and it was kind of, un, the undertone was there. And so we kind of sat on the fence, but then we, there was this very organized, coordinated response by the NRA and they sent us all these letters and emails, like there was a, this was pre-email, and they tied up our phone lines and, and we used to get these long handwritten letters that said, who are you? Second Amendment gives me the right to bear arms. Go back to making your damn shoes and um, stay out of my world. And then we'd write back a letter. Second Amendment may give you the right to bear arms. First Amendment gives us the right to tell you how we feel about it. Isn't this a great country we live in? <laughs> and then we got more and more answers and we realized this was not a, a dialogue that one could easily have. The dialogue evolved and it changed. We ran ads years later, not that many years later, acknowledging and pointing out that there were more safety regulations on teddy bears than there were on handguns, that there were more safety regulations on toy guns than there were on real guns. And that another ad that we ran years later was 40% of American homes with children have hidden guns. 87% of children play hide and seek. Um, somewhat astounding. And then the last one, which I'm just going to I just wanted to mention too, is, which I found as I was going through all my records today. So we ran a, an ad as a, basically it was a public letter to the New York Times, in the New York Times. And it was a public letter and it said, this was I think in the late 90s. Dear du gun manufacturers, congratulations. Your product is sure making a killing. And then it says, CC, the NRA gun show dealers, one in four American households, Charlton Heston, the st whole state of Texas and G.I. Joe. <laughs> I also read recently that one in, that there are 1.2 guns in this country for every person. That is astounding since I don't know anybody that has a gun. So where are all those guns? Um, the, I do believe the dialogue needs to change. And we actually have an ad campaign that's running now. This one says statistically, and it's the fact, most, the one most at risk from the gun is the one, is the one carrying it. Um, but the, the best scenario is chronicling and recounting a personal, individual story by a credible and articulate spokesperson, such as Colin Goddard. Having met Colin, they set out to bring this project to life, and they work passionately. And when I say work, they did this before and during and after their day jobs with extraordinary results, which you heard about. So I congratulate them, and they did it on a shoestring budget, and I know about shoestrings.